Sure. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Daw. I've been in the Army for 19 years. The war. Um, it's, a, it's a profound uh, question. Uh, it's, uh, it means a great deal to me. I think that uh, I think that we, as uh, as a civilization, are at a bit of a turning point, and uh, and it's time that we uh, we set the record straight that we will not uh, tolerate uh, subjugation of peoples, uh, and nor will we uh, clearly tolerate, um, I guess, uh, someone trying to impose their will. Whether that be, uh, you know, regardless of sort of religious affiliation or whatever the case, on our own soil and terrorize our people, and uh, uh, I think it's critical uh, that we we do what we do. Uh, I happen to believe in international interventionism. I think this is a classic example of that. I don't believe in the sanctity of, uh, of sovereignty over over uh, fundamental human rights, and, uh, and that, amongst other things, is the reason why we need to be independent. We need to show that we are a people of resolve, of, of character, of, of principle and that we don't back down um, when things get a little bit tough. That's what the war means to me. Uh, this flag represents, in my mind, um, a, an important turning point in uh, the collective consciousness of Canadians in terms of what their troops uh, do for them on a regular basis overseas uh, or at home. Um, you know, it was, it, this whole sort of series of events was spawned by, by Joe Green, who I think is a, uh, is a very thoughtful, very kind, uh, very generous uh, patriot. Someone who clearly loves his country, and by extension loves, uh, uh, loves the troops. And, uh, and so it was very important for us overseas when we uh, caught wind of what Joe was doing for us. And then, and then I think this flag clearly symbolizes all of them. Uh, so it's great to have it hanging in the lines to continuously remind us uh, that our fellow citizens care about what we do. I think the uh, the war, this war, any war, is uh, is largely uh, unpalatable. Uh, war is an ugly business, and the reality is that uh, Canadians, uh, by extension Westerners, period, uh, lead very comfortable, very insular lives. And um, the notion of killing and dying for a uh, cause is foreign to most people. Um, you know. Uh, so I think that uh, largely, I think there's a, there's a distaste for war period. I don't think it's this war in particular. It's just that I think that uh, people have a hard time accepting the loss of life uh, that, uh, that is inherent in any war. Uh, and so I think that's why uh, this war, like any war, is largely unpopular with, uh, with the people. Uh, yeah. I think that regardless of uh, political leanings or views of the war, uh, people just need to um, remember, and I think that they do largely. I'm, you know, I'm very proud of our of our fellow countrymen and women, and the way that they've uh, embraced their troops of late. To me, this war really marked a turning point, as I've mentioned. Um, you know, having been in the army 19 years, I hadn't experienced anything like this until after uh, our first deployment in 02. Um, so I think that regardless of, of what happens and regardless of uh, how our engagement in Afghanistan evolves nationally and regardless of that debate, that political debate that needs to happen, uh, I think that uh, people need to continue to remind themselves that there are troops overseas doing the very best they can, uh, having to think positive, having to focus on the mission and, uh, and needing the support of their fellow citizens. And so. Uh, debate is important. Political debate discourse is important in a, in a functioning democracy. Uh, but we, we need to be aware of some of the implications of these debates. And be aware that we, we are fighting a very sophisticated uh, enemy who uh, probably watch CPAC, and know exactly what's going on uh, in the House of Commons, and, and know that, um, that every death, every casualty, uh, you know, stirs up this whole new round of, uh, of discussions. And, uh, and we just, we need to, I think, ensure that we, we remain aware of that, you know, when we say what we say in public. Right. Well, I think, you know, ideally, uh, uh, I'd be out of a job and we would, we, you know, we would never see any war anywhere. Um, but realistically, and, and as, a, as a very proud Canadian, I hope that Canada continues to remain very engaged uh, in international affairs, you know. What happens in Africa, what happens in Asia, what happens in Kandahar matters to Canadians. Canadians need to know that. 
And I think that not only do we have the, uh, the capacity to do it, I think that we have the moral responsibility to do it as well. Uh, when you're a wealthy nation, uh, a na nation uh, you know, um, as fortunate as ours, I think that uh, you know, we, we have to help where we can. And, uh, and it, needs to be, uh, it needs to be well thought out. It needs to be focused in terms of the attention that we give to various sort of hotspots. We can't be everywhere all the time. But there needs to be a method to our, uh, to our approach. But at the end of the day, we need to be engaged. And uh, you know, Canada is a strong country. And, and we know that uh, we can't have a voice if we don't contribute. Uh, talk is cheap. And, uh, and credibility comes at a cost. Uh, and so uh, engagement, I think, is everything. Uh, you need to be engaged. And it doesn't mean necessarily sending troops all the time. But it, need, it means uh, having those, uh, those instruments of power, those instruments of government to get involved, to, uh, to ensure that at the end of the day, um, people are held accountable in this world. The flag is, uh, I think the flag is very symbolic of the, uh, of the love and support of our fellow citizens. Um, you know, it was, it was Joe Green that made all of this happen. Um, but it, it goes beyond Joe Green, frankly, and I think he'd be the first one to tell you that. It's uh, uh, what, uh, what it's done in terms of raising awareness of our, of our troops' contribution overseas is significant. And uh, knowing that it flew in space and knowing that uh, so many people have, were made aware of this flag and this whole venture, I think, is, uh, is important to the troops. They know that what they do by looking at that flag, they are reminded constantly that what they do is important. And, uh, and that's critical for a young soldier to know. When he's looking down the barrel at a, a six-month deployment with two young kids at home, he needs to know that people care, uh, people appreciate uh, what he's doing. Is it A for the money, I can assure you that. Oh, in terms of this uh, this flag, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, certainly in 02, uh, um, like I said, we were the first mission overseas to Afghanistan, and, and many of us, were, uh, were vets of uh, the Balkans campaigns. And so, uh, you know, um, I'd certainly experienced, I think, uh, collectively a, uh, a national sort of sense of indifference towards what we did. And, uh, and all of a sudden now we found ourselves at war. All of a sudden we found ourselves losing uh, troops overseas. And uh, by virtue of, of the efforts of, of individuals like Joe Green, we saw a, a real 180 nationally in terms of that national consciousness uh, and people caring and, and people supporting the troops and uh, it was it was a it was a big deal and especially in the heat of it overseas and um, having to deal with the grief of having lost uh, four of our brothers there it was uh, it was really quite heartwarming to know that so many people cared. Well, I suppose you know there. It, yeah, that's, that's a good question. I think that uh, on the one hand, I think it shows that um, clearly there's a, uh, a, a national sort of embracing of, of, of the troops because clearly we, uh, by flying the flag in space, uh, you know, we, were, we shot up to the highest uh, uh, priority list in terms of artifacts that were allowed to, to embark on. So for that reason alone, the fact that someone would actually care enough to include it uh, uh, in, uh, I think it was, uh, you know, I think Dr. McLean had two kilograms of, of artifacts that he was allowed to, to take onto the shuttle. And the fact that within those two kilograms of personal artifacts or personal effects, he would actually include a Patricia flag to us was, was, was pretty telling, I think, in terms of, you know, uh, how people, generally speaking, care so much now about the troops. And yeah, it was a symbolic gesture, but it was an important symbolic gesture. And, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm not particularly spiritual, but you know, you can certainly say there's a dimension of that as well. You know, and uh, but to me, it was really about uh, the fact that someone would care so much to do that for starters, and B, that uh, uh, in terms of Dr. McLean, you know, and having uh, so little capacity to do it, would actually uh, make it such a high priority event for himself. Uh, pretty telling, I think. A national and international thing, absolutely. It was uh, very much so, and it really. I think it brought the country together and it just raised awareness across the board and it was terrific. In Afghanistan, I, personally speaking, I have to be careful to stay within my lanes. I'm not a politician and ultimately as a professional soldier, uh, you know, we do uh, what our, uh, our political leadership tell us to do. Um, that being said, I think that it's, uh, you know, I think there's an important job to do uh, there. And I think that we, uh, you know, we collectively, uh, the Western world, if you will, 
need to be there uh, as long as it takes to get the job done. Now, you know, the tough question is whether or not that means that Canadians need to stay there uh, because Canadians have paid their dues. We've been there since 02. We were the first in with the Americans, uh, and we have a much smaller army, and we are we've uh, we've had our bumps and bruises, and, uh, and it's been a tough slog. So that's certainly not my decision to make, uh, but I do believe in the mission uh, there. I do believe in the cause, and I, you know, I, it will take a while. So uh, we'll have to be very, uh, have to be very determined, and think uh, long term collectively in terms of uh, making sure that we succeed in that mission. Uh, you know, the consequences are uh, hopefully uh, and collectively, and I think the assumption is certainly from the Canadian perspective that as a coalition. You know, the work will continue to be to get done. So, if our political leadership is satisfied with that, then that's terrific. And I think that that would certainly mitigate the circumstances, per se, of, of uh, the Canadian contingent going on. But I think if collectively, as a coalition, as a you know, as a Western, as as, as NATO, for example, uh, were to pull out, I think it would be it would be an unmitigated disaster. Uh, you know, I think that we're at the tipping point now, and, uh, and you know, you need to ensure that. All of those, uh, all the conditions are in place for you to move up. It can't be, it can't be driven by strict timelines. Uh, there, there need to be some very sophisticated criteria in terms of governance uh, and whatnot, uh, infrastructure and whatever else in place before you pull out. Uh, so it's very difficult to be too linear about it, too, uh, too, uh, I suppose, uh, committed to a, uh, a set time level. Perhaps we as a country can do that in the context of the coalition. But uh, it's going to be long. It's going to be long, slog, long fight. For pulling out, I think it will be difficult. I think the fam for the families of the fallen, I think it will be very difficult. There's no, there's no denying. Uh, I think that, uh, and I, 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 I can't say I speak for all families of the fallen, but I would certainly uh, have the impression that uh, you know, if we were to fail in Afghanistan, certainly amongst the families of the fallen, it would be a great sense of. Sadness, I think, and perhaps a sense of futility, right, in terms of, of their own personal losses. Certainly, the families of the soldiers, I think, would probably be very relieved. It's been very tough. I've got non-commissioned officers here who've been over three, four times overseas, uh, fighting the good fight, and it's and it's been very difficult. So, uh, undeniably, from a serving soldier's perspective, their families will be, uh, will be quite relieved, I think. I just, you know, I'd like to take two seconds again just to, uh, for the record, uh, to thank Joe Green. You know, I think that he is a, uh, he's a patriot, he's a wonderful Canadian, he's, he's a great human being, and, uh, and we are grateful, very grateful, um, as a battalion, as a regiment, as an army, uh, and probably as, a, as, a, as an institution, as the Canadian Forces, to have citizens like Joe Green who, uh, you know, who show their, uh, their love and support for us. It, it's, uh, it, uh, it does a great deal to boost morale and, uh, and to give us uh, the needed strength when uh, times are tough. So I just wanted that known for the record for, for me personally on behalf of all of us. We're very grateful for Green and his actions. Okay.